All right, let's start talking about composition. And really, this is probably just going to be best by doing a few examples for you. So I'm looking at problem 16 on page 132 of section 1.6. And question 16 asks us to evaluate g of f of 2. So g open circle f of 2. And remember, we're taking this, we're defining this to be g parentheses f parentheses 2. Plug 2 into f. Whatever you get out of f, plug that into g. Now, we do need to know what f and g are. And they tell us that f of x is defined to be 2x plus 1. g of x is defined to be 2x squared minus 3. So, one way of doing this is just simply do, do like I said. Plug 2 into f. f of 2 is 2 times 2 plus 1. That's 4 plus 1 or 5. So then whatever you get out of f of 2, plug that into g. So we're going to look at g of 5. And this is going to be 2 times 5 squared minus 3. Well, 5 squared is 25. 2 times 25 is 50. And 50 minus 3 is 47. So that's our answer. f of 2 we found to be 5 and we plugged that into g to get 47. That's one way of doing this problem. Another way of doing it is kind of all at once. So I'll show you that. So g of f of 2. In this method, I'm just going to write it as I'm going to f of 2 is the same thing as 2 times 2 plus 1. And I'm keeping g surrounding it. But I'm just trying to find out what f of 2 is and ignoring the rest of it, ignoring the outside. So this is g of 4 plus 1, which is g of 5. And we're back to, with a little work that we've already done, you get back to the answer of 47. So whichever way you prefer, it really doesn't matter. All you're doing here is just plugging the x value in, you know, going left to right, or excuse me, going right to left, plugging 2 into, this case, f, and then plugging the result from f into g, and whatever you get out as a result of g is your answer. We'll do a bunch of examples in the next video on this, but I do want to talk about exercises like number 28 on page 133 where in this case we're not composing at a single number we're just doing f of g of x so we're doing an arbitrary input and we're asked to find the domain of the composition.
So before we do any of that, let's figure out what the domain of F and the domain of G is. The domain of F, no square roots, so we don't have to worry about those, but we do have a denominator. The denominator can't be zero. The only way the denominator could be zero is if x is equal to one. And we don't want the denominator to be zero, so we say that x should not be one. If x is not one, we're never going to divide by zero. And over here for g, the domain of g, the domain of g is the same idea. No square roots, only a denominator. The value that makes the denominator zero is x equals minus three. We don't want that to happen, so we say x can be anything but this value. We're gonna need to keep these in mind. So the book asks us to find f of g, which is basically the same thing as saying f of g of x, and its domain. So, believe it or not, the easy thing, or at least what I think the easy thing to do, is to evaluate f of g. Now in this case, you kind of have to do things this way because you can't really simplify g of x down to just one number. You have to look at it as f of 2 over x plus 3. So g of x got replaced with the right hand side of its equation. And now in f I'm going to look through, find all the x's, and replace each x with this. So we start off and 1 over is still the same, there's no x's yet. Ah, first x. So instead of x, I'm going to write 2 over x plus 3. And then you subtract 1 from that. And this is rather ugly because you've got a fraction within a larger fraction. Well, we can combine uh, fractions in the denominator because we can think of 1 as being 1 over 1. Anything over 1 is just itself. So I have to multiply top and bottom by x plus 3 in order to get this to look right. So this would be 2 over x plus 3 minus x plus 3 over x plus 3. So instead of 1 over 1, I multiply top and bottom of that by x plus 3 so I can have a common denominator. And so now I have 1 over 2 over x plus, excuse me, it's going to be 2 minus because now I can combine fractions now that they have the same denominator. And we can simplify. 2 minus x is just going to be 2 minus x minus 3, which is 2 minus 3 are like terms, so I can combine those to get minus 1 minus x over x plus 3. And now, dividing by a fraction is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. minus x minus 1. So we get x plus 3 over minus x minus 1. And if you want, you can pull out there's a negative in the denominator that can be factored out and brought outside the fraction. So this looks as minus on the outside of the fraction x plus 3 over x plus 
one. That, believe it or not, I think is the relatively easy part. Granted, it's long and tedious, but finding the domain requires a great deal of thought here. Now, let's think about this. X is going into G. What value do we not want going into G? Minus 3. We don't want minus 3 going into G. So, the domain of this should be of f of g. One restriction should be that x cannot equal minus 3 because g of minus 3 is a bad result. You know, that forces us to divide by 0. But then g is going into f and f doesn't like 1 as an input. So we have to find out when is g of x equal to 1 because whatever that is, we don't want g of x to be 1 because g of x is going into f and f doesn't like taking in the value 1. So we don't want g of x being 1. But we have to figure out what does that mean in terms of x. And great, g of x shouldn't be 1. Great. What restriction on x do we have here? Well, let's find out. We have to solve g of x equals 1, and whatever x values make g 1, those are going to be the specific x values that we cannot have in our domain. So g of x was 2 over x plus 3. And you can think of 1 as being 1 over 1, so you can then cross multiply. So you have 2 times 1 equals 1 times x plus 3. 3. So this is 2 equals x plus 3. So subtracting 3 from both sides, we get minus 1 is equal to x. So f of g of x, we found that to be minus x plus 3 over x plus 1. The domain of f of g, g didn't like minus 3. f doesn't want g, the output of g, to be 1. And that only happens when x equals 1. So f, in this case, doesn't like f being doesn't like x being minus 1 which in this case coincidentally is where the denominator is equal to 0 so we don't even and there's no other restrictions here there's no other square roots there's no other denominators the only denominator is that x is x plus 1 and that's 0 when x is minus 1 and since we don't want it to be 0 x can't be minus 1. So this kind of serves double duty. It can't be minus 1 because otherwise f is going to get a bad value eventually. And it can't be minus 1 because it makes the denominator of our expression here 0. And that's our answer.